Good day. Got some LiPo batteries that need charging before you can punch some holes in the sky with your FPV quad? Me too. <laughs> then you're going to need a LiPo battery charger to make that happen. You're in luck, because today I'm going to go over the Hobbymate D6 Dual Light LiPo Battery Charger. It's the smaller and less expensive version of the well-known Hobbymate D6 Dual Pro, but it still packs quite a punch. We'll take a quick look at its specs and do a side-by-side -side comparison to a couple other similar LiPo battery chargers. I'll also go over its features, operation, and you may even get a few LiPo battery charging safety and battery management tips out of me too. Who knows? You might even get a little charge out of this video. So make sure to hit that thumbs up button below and subscribe to your TVAC FPV channel, your home for your journey to better FPV fun, flights, and racing stuff. All right, let's check it out. I've been calling this Hobbymate D6 Dual Light a LiPo charger, but in fact, it charges a lot of different batteries. As an FPV pilot, I'm primarily concerned with LiPos and lithium ion batteries, which I use for my quads, goggles, and transmitter. But as you can see in the quick start instruction guide, which came with it, that I have displayed on the screen, it can charge around 10 different types of batteries. It's a dual channel DC input charger, and that's what these two XT60 ports are here for in the front along with their balance ports. This means you can charge two different LiPo batteries at the same time without using a parallel charging board. In fact, with these two channels, you can even charge two different types of batteries at the same time, which I'll demonstrate in just a little bit. When I said it's a DC input charger, that means you can plug a large battery from 10.5 to 30 volts using an XT60 connector to the back of this charger as its power source. So it doesn't have to be plugged into a wall outlet, which means you can charge up your LiPo batteries in the field with it just by using a larger battery as its power source. As you can see, when it starts up, it immediately goes into a self-checking mode, which is nice to know that everything's working properly. Both channel screens then pop up, and I'll demonstrate how to navigate through the screens here in just a bit. A few things first, though. First, you'll notice it's pretty quiet, and it's got a 2.4 inch color screen, which is nice. It also has this nice metal scroll wheel, which you can use to scroll between the various options in the menus, and then just press down on it to select your option. It works just like the scroll wheels you find on a lot of transmitters these days, like the RadioMaster TX16S. This button over here is used to switch back and forth between the channels, and to exit out of a menu. Let me unplug it for now. Here in the back, along with the DC input power supply XT60, you see it has an internal fan for cooling and a couple other nice features over here. A power delivery USB-C charging port for your phone or other device that charges at a maximum of 45 watts. Then you have another USB charge port here that operates at 5 volts and 2.1 amps. On the side, we have a micro USB port for firmware updates and this other one over here they call a multi-function port. One more thing, on the bottom it's even got these little kickstands so you can set it up at an angle if you want to reduce any glare you may have on the screen. All right, before we get into its operation, let's take a look at how its specs compare to a few other similar LiPo battery chargers on the market today. Okay, I put this chart together in case you're wondering how this Hobbymate D6 Dual Lite compares to other similar ones out there. All of these are DC input voltage capable for field charging with a large battery source. If you want to plug any of these into your wall outlet for use at home, you'll need an external AC to DC power supply adapter. Which is another nice thing about this D6 dual light. You have the choice of getting it by itself for DC input power only for 80 to 100 bucks, depending on where you get it at, or you can also get the AC-DC version that comes with the external power supply if you don't already have one. By the way, there's a $10 off coupon available for you in the video description below. If you do already have an external power supply, then you can save some more bucks just by getting the DC version. Here you see the rest of the D6 dual light specs and how it stacks up against the rest of these models. These charge current and charge power specs for all of these models are for each channel. All of these other models that I'm comparing with the Hobbymate D6 Dual Lite are also dual channel chargers. For instance, if you're charging two different batteries using both channels, each channel can put out a max of 300 watts and 15 amps. One thing I forgot to mention is you can operate this charger in synchronous mode as well. That means you can use an XT60 parallel battery Y connector like this one I made and there's also a link to one below you can purchase. The main advantage of this mode is it basically combines the two channels output power together, forming 600 watts. 
This could be useful with a parallel charging board if you want to charge more than two batteries at the same time. However, before you attempt that, there's some specifics you need to be aware of first for safety reasons, such as the batteries should be of the same number of cells, similar capacities. I never parallel charge batteries of different capacities, and they also need to be approximately the same starting voltage, like if you had three or four 2S 520 milliamp hour LiPo batteries that you wanted to charge at the same time. By approximately the same voltage, I'm talking about for a 4S LiPo, that means within about 0.4 volts of each other, whereas for a 2S LiPo, that would mean within about 0.2 volts of each other. This is important because if you try to charge multiple batteries in parallel of significantly different voltages, they may overheat and catch fire. So you'll want to know the voltage of each battery prior to parallel charging them together. To do that, I use one of these simple voltage checkers. I'll briefly demonstrate parallel charging later. Okay, let's power this thing up and see how it operates. We'll power it on and it goes through its self-check mode. Then we'll press and hold the scroll wheel and it takes us to the charger settings. Here we can scroll down to any one of these and press down on the scroll wheel to enter that particular menu. Let's go to system parameters. Here you can alter any of these if you'd like. I'm going to leave mine on all the default values, especially the volume on high, the completion signal on repeat, so it beeps more than once, and I haven't named my device yet, so if you've got a suggestion for my charger's name, let me know in the comments section below. To exit out of system settings, we can scroll down to back, or we can press the button over here that says exit. When we scroll down to tools and press the scroll bar, we see it has these various capabilities, which I believe work in conjunction with a multifunction port over here on the side. When you have a battery connected, you can calibrate the channels. Here you can initiate the system self-checking function, which automatically completes its startup. You can restore the factory settings, and under System Info, it shows you your current software version and serial number. Now let's get into our task parameters. This is where you can change the settings for a couple safety items if you want to, such as when you want the charger to cut off after a certain amount of time. Please keep in mind you should never charge the LiPo batteries while leaving the charger unattended. In fact, I have a relatively inexpensive class ABC fire extinguisher on hand at all times whenever I'm charging LiPo batteries. You can also set the max milliamp hour capacity so if it exceeds this number when charging, the charger is going to cut off. The end current setting is where the charger will cut off when the completed current and setup current ratio is within this percentage. Here you can turn the trickle charge on or off. I'll keep mine off. Okay, let's exit out of here. And let me demonstrate how to charge a couple batteries. First, I'm going to demonstrate how to charge one battery with one channel. Since I fly micros, quads with 4-inch props or less, all my LiPos have XT30 connectors on them. So I'll use this XT60 to XT30 adapter. From this main menu with both channels showing, I just short press this channel button to select the channel I want. And we'll use channel 1. From here, I'll long press the channel button and I can select from among these various tasks. I want to charge the battery. You also have these other options. For battery type, I'm going to choose LiPo. And I'm going through these settings manually, but normally when you connect the battery to the charger, it automatically adjusts these settings for you. Just to be sure, I like to manually do it myself. For my cell voltage, I'm going to keep it at 4.2 volts. You can adjust that simply by using the scroll wheel again. And my cell count, this is a 4S battery, so I'll change this to 4S. I always like to charge my batteries at 1C, and this is an 1100 milliamp hour LiPo, so my current setting, I'll change to 1.1. Plug it in, scroll down, then we'll just select Start Task. Notice I didn't plug in the balance lead, so I'm going to select, it's asking me if I want to perform the task without the balancer. I'm going to say no. Now when I plug this balance lead in, it has an indication here on this side of the balance connector saying that this is negative. So when I plug this balance lead in, the black wire 
on the right hand side of this connector is negative and these ridges on the balance connector will be facing up. So I plug the negative wire in all the way to the right side and now we select start task and it begins charging. Now within a minute or two of charging we can check the LiPo's internal resistance by using the scroll wheel. Here you see the internal resistance of each of the cells. The internal resistance of a battery is an indication of a battery's health. All the cells of the LiPo should have similar internal resistances. They don't have to be, and they most likely won't be exactly the same. But if one or two of the cells are way out of whack with the other ones, that might be a sign that those cells are going bad, so you might want to keep a close eye on that battery. In fact, I've got an Excel spreadsheet I use to keep track of all my batteries to include the date I purchased them, their weight, capacity, max charge rate, how many charging cycles I've put on each one, and their internal resistances. That's why you normally see a number on each of my batteries. That way I can keep an eye on them and better determine when they're nearing the end of their life. I'll put a template of the spreadsheet available for you to download in the video description below that has typical values of internal resistances for various size LiPos I use with my micro FPV drones. Let's go ahead and stop this charge and I'll show you how you can not only charge two batteries at the same time, but two different types of batteries at the same time. Like if you needed to charge a goggles battery and your transmitter battery at the same time. For my goggles battery, I use this RDQ 3000 milliamp hour 2S LiPo. And for my transmitter battery, I use this 2S 5000 milliamp hour lithium ion battery pack from Bob at Bob's Batteries, which shipped from Arizona here in the US. And you can order those through rcbatterykit.com. For this demo, I'm going to be using this AC-DC power supply adapter that came with mine for its power source. This also comes with a heating ventilation fan built inside with safety features such as short circuit overload and voltage protection. It also comes with the same USB-C and USB charge ports that the D6 dual light charger comes with, and it even comes with its own little kickstands too. By the way, any of the resources and products I mentioned in this video are available through links in the video description below, some of which are affiliate links that help support your TMAC FPV channel. We're going to set the D6 dual light charger on top of the power supply. Oh yeah, they're magnetized. So it won't slip off the stack. We'll connect the lithium ion battery to channel 2. This is my transmitter battery. And we'll connect my goggles battery to channel 1. Let me make sure to plug in the LiPo balance charger. Balance lead. Negative to negative over here. There we go. And this one, I'm using the XT60 connector. And flip this connector over, so negatives on that side, and we'll, on the right, and we'll plug that in over here. So we've got the balance leads and the XT30 and XT60 connectors plugged in. Now when I power this AC-DC power supply up, it, the fan's going to kick in, so it's going to be a little bit noisier than when the charger was running off of DC power through the larger LiPo battery. So I apologize for that in advance. Then we plug in the power supply. Now I'm going to start this up, and it's going to be a little bit noisy. It goes through its self-check. And then from here, we just set up each channel like we did with our one battery demo on one channel. However, our goggles... 2S battery has a 3000 milliamp hour capacity, so we're going to charge that at 3 amps. So let's go to channel 1. This is a LiPo, so we're going to leave it at LiPo, 4.2 volts. It automatically uh, detected the number of cells, uh, 3000 milliamp hours, so let's make this for a 1C charge rate. We're going to set that to 3 amps. Whoop, 3 amps. There we go. LiPo, 2S, 4.2 volts per cell, 3 amps. We're going to start the task. And it's charging on channel 1, the 3000 milliamp hour 2 cell LiPo. Now let's go to channel 2, which it does automatically, and set that up. This is a lithium ion battery 2 cell. So we have to change LiPo to lithium ion. We'll leave that at 4.1, 2S. This is uh, 5000 milliamp hour, but I'm going to charge it at 3 amps as well. 
So here we're just going to start task. And now we have channel 2 charging the lithium ion battery. And you can see they're both charging at the same time. Two batteries, two different channels, two different types of batteries. It's really that simple. While we're at it, I might as well charge this phone up. So I've got two different types of batteries and a phone running off this charger right now. Good stuff. I'm going to go ahead and stop this demo because, as I mentioned earlier, I'd briefly demonstrate parallel charging. So let's go ahead and do that. For this demo, I'll be charging three 2S 520 milliamp hour LiPos, the type you might want to use with your whoop or toothpick type quads. I'm going to check the voltage of each to make sure that they're approximately the same. 7.4, 7.37, not too bad, 7.37. They're pretty close to the same voltages for all three. I'll connect all three to the parallel charging board. Like that. And then I'm going to connect the parallel charging board to the charger using this Y connector. So we plug these ends into channel one and channel two. I'm gonna have to move this probably out of the screen. Plug the XT60 of the parallel charging board into this Y connector. Plug the balance lead into the connector. Power up the power supply. And I've got the cell count at 2S, which is correct. Cell voltage at 4.2, correct. Battery type LiPo, correct. I'm going to select synchronous charging, since I'm using the Y connector. Synchronous charging. And then down here, the current setting, I'm going to set that to 1.5 amps for a 1C charge rate. And that's because when you parallel charge, you add the capacities of all of the batteries you're charging together, which would be 1,560 milliamp hours, or to the first decimal position, 1.5 amps. There. Then I'm going to place this charging board with the LiPos in this fireproof LiPo-safe bag from HobbyMate. This is just another safety precaution to prevent burning your house down or your vehicle whether you're storing your batteries, traveling with them, or even during charging. This bag comes with a nice Velcro cover, and it's also got a zipper enclosure. So I'm just going to place this in here like this. I'm going to close the zipper. Then I'm going to close the Velcro. Then I'm just going to press Start Task like we did earlier. And we're synchronized charging three 2S 520 milliamp hour LiPos simultaneously. That's the Hobbymate D6 Dual Light LiPo Battery Charger. Small in size, lightweight, with versatility for different types of batteries, and for both in-home or field use, yet powerful for your FPV battery charging needs. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I've got some charging to do, so I'll catch you next video. Thanks for your time. Clear skies, friend.